If I was to describe my father in just three words, I would say he was passionate, humble, and fun-loving. Those three concepts and words, to me, symbolize a balance. And he pursued all three of those elements to their fullest. In spite of coming from a rich aristocratic family, he befriended the villagers and common people with equal uh, love and zest because you know he recognized talent or value in a person without material aspects related to them the passion is obvious I mean uh, he had an absolute love for nature and common people and he sought to see that through the eyes of a camera and that became his passion and to the degree he pursued it was that it cost him his uh, family and fortune in a way. And I know he was fun loving because I grew up with him and we had a great time and none of the fun we had required lots of money. It all depended on nature and it depended on his good, uh, his good nature and God's nature. We did a lot of outings and we had amazing food and none of that depends on money. So I, I, I think that's how I would characterize my dad. My father carried his passion for nature and cultural aspect of uh, rural life into his commercial work as well. Once he was assigned to photograph the new installation of uh, Sui Gas in Pakistan, the gas was recently discovered and the company became uh, quite uh, wealthy and famous very quickly. So he was commissioned to photograph their new installation in a rural area of Pakistan. He went there and as usual, he, he took pictures that they wanted him to take, but he framed some of the photographs with the rural villagers in the foreground. In one, there was a shepherd in front of the Sui installation. But the one that caught everybody's eye was a flute player that caught his eye. He made him the main subject of the photograph and the background had the Sui gas installation uh, behind him. That became an iconic photograph for the gas company because they saw it as a great cultural publicity for the company. And, and again, I think the reason his art is out of the box is because he brings this uh, commonality to uncommon places. You know, my father's advice resonates really well with me even today. He always said that uh, never undermine a person's uh, ability and talent by his looks. It's like saying, don't judge a book by its cover. And you know, I will never forget, this is something I will remember. The person who fixed our cars in back home was a you know an older fellow, always in torn cloths and dirty hands. And my dad always called him Ustad because not only he was a really talented mechanic, but he could fix just about anything. I think he had a genius about mechanical uh, aspects of things. My dad used to take his cameras to him to get them clean. And that's a really fine thing. It's not like fixing a car. To this extent, but he was, the, the way he cooked payas would outdo any gourmet cook in any restaurant. And my father just craved for his food that he cooked. So, you know, he saw that this mechanic is more than just a mechanic. And he respected him and he called him Ustad which kind of reminds me of our last name, Master, which kind of came from his grandfather. And I, I find that uh, this ability of my father to catch a diamond in the rough or find a gem in stones is what gave his photography that special flavor because that's what he picked for his subjects and his backgrounds. So 
So my father lived a double life, as I told you. You know, it's a paradox because he did not, you know, refuse the luxuries and uh, the pampering he got at home. But he also craved for the other side of life, which was all around him. So he got himself a bicycle and he strung his camera on his shoulder, rode on his bike into the rural roads of the outskirts of Palanpur, which uh, actually is the northern part of Gujarat and it borders on Rajasthan, it has amazing scenery. And what he would do is wait for evening light, which was his favorite light. He always told me that he loved long shadows that the evening light cast and the unbelievable contrast it provided him. And then if he used that light and photographed his subject against light, it created a sharp contrast in his, some of his photographs, which became again one of his other hallmarks. He had a knack for capturing character of the village people through their portraits and the way he lit them with natural light and very dramatic contrast really brings out the harsh lines of a farmer's hard work on their face. And you can see it in a bunch of his portraits. His other uh, specialty, if you want to call it, was he loved to photograph people against light as opposed to in front of light, which is the common way to take pictures. And this against light photography did two things. It, it put the people in silhouette, making, making them much more mysterious as a silhouette. At the same time, it created drama and excitement in the pictures. And, and his landscapes kind of took an aura of a dreamlike quality by this kind of photography. As far as uh, photographing dignitaries is concerned, I mean, one of his assignment as a press photographer was to travel with uh, then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Liaquat Ali Khan, to India at his first visit. And it was a historic time because in one visit, all the three future Prime Ministers of India were present. It was Jawaharlal Nehru, his son Indira Gandhi, and his Foreign Secretary, Lal Bahadur Shastri. They all came to the airport to meet them. And it was a historic occasion. But you know, that's not the photograph he prided himself on. He prided himself on photographing Nehru weaving khadi like a common person, sitting down on the floor. And uh, when Nixon visited Pakistan, he photographed him kneeling down and talking to a woman who was spinning cotton. These are the images the dignitaries really will take back with them because other people, you know, they are not op shots. That is this paradox of marrying one polarity with the other. Dignitaries with common people, city life with rural life. And I think it's that excitement that that contrast creates that gives his photograph another special touch. In addition to this uh, dramatic photography, evening light and uh, composing people in silhouettes against light, to me his uh, largest achievement in composing photographs was the unusual vantage point. Because, you know, beauty is an eye of beholder. You can look at one thing in so many ways. I recall a couple of photographs of his which particularly highlight this. He was invited to photograph a parade in front of an airline uh, uh, air force uh, gathering. And most people photographed the uh, parade and the dignitaries present from the front with planes in the background. My father walked behind them, behind the plane, stood himself, positioned himself behind the propeller and framed the picture with the plane as the main subject and the people as the background. And again, that lent that photograph, that special vintage of the Mazur Master stamp. Uh, we normally photograph sunsets with the boat in the middle or even to the side, but the boat is a small thing, the sunset takes over. He did the opposite. He captured the boat in the front overshadowing the sunset, not even the full boat, but a part of it. It dominated the picture, sunset was in the background, and yet it did not lose its value. In fact, the dark black hulk of the boat contrasted the amazing 
shades and hues of the sunset, even in black and white. It even enhanced it, I would say, by having this boat in the front. And again, it, it, it composed the picture in an unconventional way, which was not the way people did things back then. I mean, it, you can call it even a postmodern way to engage uh, subjects and uh, backgrounds. If I was to single out one particular picture from literally over 5,000 negatives that we have discovered of his uh, collection, there was an award-winning picture from uh, Ruliflex Camera's 25th anniversary. They organized an international exhibition, and my father was placed in award-winning entry in that competition. Again, it, it, he photographed common people weighing uh, some material on scales. The reason I like this picture the most is because it captures all of his uh, previously discussed uh, um, talents or vantage points. As an architect, I appreciate the geometry. He captured the angle of the weighing scale as a triangle, put the people against light, and the aura created by the uh, I, I believe it was some kind of uh, flower that they were weighing because it, it, it was uh, in the air and it gave that uh, brilliance behind these people. So the contrast, the subject, and the composition with the A-frame, if you want to call it that, makes this a very special picture for me. Every time I look at it, it gives me goosebumps. The legacy that my dad left with us kind of ironically ties to my favorite photograph of it. You know, he photographed uh, the scales weighing stuff, which reminds me that his main lesson to all, all three of us, his children, is that we should learn to live a balanced life. You balance yourself with entertainment, which is his fun-loving trait. You balance yourself with passion, follow something that you really like. And you balance yourself with humility by treating everybody as your equal. And that kind of balance, I think, applies to so many things in life. Even though my father won several hundreds of awards and citations during his lifetime and his photographs were hung internationally, today, almost half a century after he passed away, we are finding renewed interest in his work. Royal Ontario Museum has approached me and have indicated interest in our, in fact, archiving his work as we speak. His work has been exhibited at the Richmond Hills Center for Performing Arts a few years ago. He has been exhibited at the Ottawa City Hall, the city where he practiced photography and passed away. His work is being studied at University of Toronto and by journalists today in New Delhi. Uh, they're working on uh, publishing aspects of his work in their research. And we find that this renewed interest in his work is not just uh, uh, because of the photography, uh, black and white photography's resurgence and a fashion, but I think it's because of the depth that his photographs carried, which was timeless. It, it tied common people, it brought them into light. It brought nature and people. I mean, our earth is nature and we are nature. And a lot of times we forget that we are part of this earth. And in a way, I think his photographs remind us that of that. That we are all one big machine that nature has created and we need to live in harmony with each other. <laughs>